In this video, we're going to implement a real-time chat application that uses a WebSocket powered by a Lambda function. The chat client will have an indicator when it is connected, a list of connected usernames that updates in real time when new users connect to the chat. It will allow to send public messages, which will be delivered to all the connected users, and private messages, which will only be delivered to the recipient that they were sent to and no one else. We're going to implement the server from scratch, set up API gateway, and create the Lambda function that will power it. And then we'll write the client-side code to connect to this WebSocket that we created. Let's get started by setting up a new WebSocket in API Gateway. We'll give it the name Socket API. And for the route selection expression, we'll use request by the action as suggested. We're going to add the predefined routes, as you see here, connect, disconnect, and default. When the client first connects to our socket, this event will be called connect, then disconnect when the client disconnects, and default will be called for all the events that don't match any action. We're going to use a Lambda function to handle our events. So technically we can only keep this default route key and send all of our events to this handler. But just for the example, we're going to use custom routes and configure the custom routes that our server is going to handle. But we don't need to do it. We can just use the default key and then parse our request and get the key from there. So let's add the custom routes for our function. First, the client will be able to set a name. When the client connects, it will uh, use the set name function to set its name that will appear in the users list. Then the client will also be able to send a public message. We'll call it send public. And we'll also support private messages, we'll call it set private. And when we'll call this event, then we'll also need to specify the message and the recipient of the event that we're going to send the message to. And when we'll call send public, then we'll specify the message as the argument. And when we'll call set name, we'll specify the name. Now we have six routes and we want to point all of them to a Lambda function. So now API Gateway asks us for each route key, which integration type we want to use. So for all of them, we want to use a Lambda function that we didn't create yet. So let's choose integration type Lambda for all of them and then create our Lambda function. So now let's go to the Lambda console and create a new function. Let's call it chat API handler. Now that our Lambda function is ready, let's copy the ARN of this function and use it in API Gateway to specify which function we want to be called when we get the events from the socket client. So for all our routes, we want to use the same function. We'll create a single stage called production and confirm to create our API Gateway. Now that our socket is created, we can go to the production stage and we'll get two URLs, a WebSocket URL and a connection URL. The WebSocket URL is the URL that we're going to use from our client to connect to our WebSocket. You can see that it starts with WSS. And then we also have the connection URL, which starts with HTTPS. And this is the URL that we're going to make requests to when we want to send a message to our clients. So each time a client connects to our WebSocket URL, we'll get a connection ID for this client. And when we'll post to this connection URL with the connection ID as an argument, then our client will receive a message from our socket. So again, a client connects first to the WebSocket URL and we get a connection ID in our Lambda function. And then using this connection ID, we send a post request to this connection URL and we pass the connection ID. And then the data we send to this connection URL along with the connection ID will be received in the socket in real time by our client that connected to this WebSocket. And let's say we want to send a message to all of our clients, then we'll just make a lot of requests to the connection URL with all the connection IDs and pass them all the information that we want to pass to them. So now let's switch to our Lambda function and start writing the code for our socket. In the Lambda function, the event object will contain attributes that we'll need to extract because they'll contain useful information about the request. So first of all, we'll have a request context. From this request context, we can extract the connection ID. This will be unique for every client that connects to our socket. We're going to keep this connection ID because we're going to use this ID to send messages back to the client. Another important attribute is the route key. The route key will contain one of the routes that we defined earlier, such as connect, set name, or send public or send private. Let's set a switch statement that will check the route key value. It will act as sort of a router for our function. We have six routes, so let's copy and paste it six times. Our routes are going to be connect, 
disconnect. The default route will be a catch all for all the actions that we didn't define. Set name, which the client will use to set its name. Send public to send a public message to all the connected users and set private, which will send uh, the private message only to the specific recipient that is supposed to get it. The event object is also going to contain a body attribute. In our application, the body will be in a JSON format. So we'll create a body object, which will be empty, and then we'll try to parse the event body. So we'll always expect the event body to be a string, which contains a stringified JSON. So now that we're handling the events that come from the client, let's see how we can send data the other way from our Lambda function to the client. For example, let's say in the send public route, we want to send a public message to all of the connected users. So we'll need a function that will accept two arguments. One will be the array of all the users that we want to send a message to. And the second one will be the body of the message. Then if you want to send a private message, it should be sent only to one user, not to all the users. So we'll change the function to send to one. The first argument will be a string, which will be the connection ID of the specific user that we want to send this message to. And then the second argument will be an object that will contain the contents of this message. So in case we're sending a message to everyone, we'll use the public message attribute. And if we're sending a private message, we'll use the private message attribute. So now let's see how these send to all and send to one functions will look like. So let's define them at the beginning of our file. The send to one function will have two arguments. First, the connection ID that we want to send the message to, and then the body of the message. In case of send to all, we'll also have the body of the message, but the first argument will be an array of all the connection IDs that we want to send the messages to. We also need to go back to API Gateway and copy the connection URL that we're going to use to send messages to our client. So in the send to one function, we need to take this endpoint and send it a request to send the message to a specific connection ID. And we're going to do that using the AWS SDK. So let's initiate the client that we're going to use to connect to the AWS SDK. And we're going to use the API gateway and management API. The only argument it receives is the endpoint that we got from the API gateway, which is the connection URL. And then to send the message, we're going to wrap it and try catch statement. And then within the statement, we will call the post to connection function of the API gateway management API. And it accepts two arguments. First, the connection ID that we're passing to this function. Again, this is the connection ID of the user that we want to send the message to. And then data, which will be a buffer of a stringified object that we pass to the function as well. So each time we want to push some data to a client that is currently connected to our socket, we'll need this client's connection ID and then the body that we're going to uh, push to this uh, client. Then we'll also have an option to send a message to several users, not just one. So in this case, we have an array of IDs and a body. So what we're going to do in the send to all function, we're just going to iterate over the array of the IDs and call send to one for each one of them. So it will look like this. We're going to use the map function to iterate over all of the IDs in our array and call send to one with the connection ID and the body that we accept as an argument. When we call the send to all function, let's pass it the connection ID of the current user. And also when sending a private message, let's pass it the connection ID of the current user as well. So let's try to save and deploy. And one last thing we need to do is go to the configuration and add permissions to our Lambda function to work with the API Gateway Execution API. So we'll click on a role. It will take us to AWS IAM, and then we'll attach the policy. We'll attach the Amazon API Gateway Invoke Full Access. Now that our policy was attached, let's uh, deploy the function again. And now it should be ready to be called. To test our function, we're going to use WSCAT, which is a CLI tool that allows us to connect to a WebSocket. This is how you install it. And then we'll go back to API Gateway, we'll copy the URL of our socket. And then in the terminal, we'll run wsket-c and pass it the URL of our WebSocket. Our connection was successful and let's copy it and open it in another window as well. So now we have two connections to the same socket. So now let's try to call send public and send private. Since we're using our own connection ID, the request should come back right to the same user that is connected to the socket. 
and it works. First, we sent a JSON to the socket and the socket replied with a public message as we define in our Lambda function. Since we are using our own connection ID, this user is the only one that receives this event. Let's try the second user, but this time we'll try the private message. So this seems to work as well. But since we're using the same connection ID, each user is separate from all the other ones. But when we want to send a public message, we want all the users to receive this message, not just a single one. So let's modify our Lambda code and implement this logic. Let's first implement the set name route. To store all the names and the connection IDs of the users that are currently connected to the socket, we're going to create a new object called names. This object is going to contain the connection ID as the key and then the name as the value for each user that is connected to our socket. So when a client calls the set name route, we're going to set the connection ID and the name of this user. And then when the client disconnects, we want to delete this key. The name is going to be a parameter sent by the client through the body. So this is where we'll take the name from. Note that just for demonstration purposes, for a simple example, we're going to use an object to save the names. Of course, using an object is not a good idea because every time we'll deploy the function, this object will be reset, but it's good enough for our example. In one of my previous videos, I went over how to connect to a MySQL database through a Lambda function, so you can check it out, but you can also use any other storage method that you prefer. Let's implement all the routes of our socket. First, when any user disconnects, we want to send a message to all the users to notify them that a user has disconnected. So the message will be the username has left the chat and we're going to send it to all the connection IDs. So we'll take the, all the keys from our names object and send them this message. Then we're going to delete the user that disconnected from the names object. And then we'll send another message to all the users containing the list of the usernames that are left in the chat. Then when a user calls the set name route, first we're going to add the username to our names object with the key of the connection ID of the user that set the name. Then we're going to send a message to all the users to update their users list. And finally, we'll send a message to all of the users as well. And we're going to send a system message that notifies all the users that a username has joined the chat. Note that every time we send a message to all the users, we take all the keys of the names object. And the keys will be all the connection IDs of all the users that connected to the socket before. Then when we want to send a public message, again, we'll send a message to all the users in the chat and we'll send the public message, uh, which will contain the username and then the body of the message. And finally, to send a private message, first, we're going to find the connection ID of the recipient of this private message. So we're going to iterate over all the keys of our names object until we find the key with the same username that we've been provided by the user that sends the private message. Once we find it, we'll now call the send to one function because we don't want to send this message to all of the users. We only want to send it to this single recipient and we'll send a private message which will contain the username of the user that is sending the message and the body of the message. Now let's save and deploy and try out our socket again. Let's connect to the socket from both windows. And now as a first user, let's try to set the name. As expected, we get a list of the members back. Currently, we have only one username, Bob. And then we get a system message, Bob has joined the chat. Now let's set the name for the second user. This time we have two users because both of them set the name. And also Bob gets a message about Alice joining the chat. So this is an example of a message that was sent to all users. Now let's send a public message. After calling the send public action, we immediately get an event back from the socket with the public message. And this message was sent to all the users. We only have two, but both of them received the public message that was sent by Alice. Now let's try to send a private message. This message was only delivered to Bob because he was the recipient of our message. So unlike the public message that was delivered to all users, this message was delivered only to a single user and the other users don't see it. And now if we'll disconnect with this user from the chat, we immediately get an event on our other user that's telling us that Alice has left the chat. And now we get an updated user list with a list of members, which includes only Bob. Now that we finished writing the backend for our socket, let's switch to the client. To connect to our WebSocket from the browser, we're going to use the WebSocket API that is available in all modern browsers. 
This is the UI that we're going to use to display the data that we received from our socket. Currently, it has just a fake list of users and messages. But once we connect it to our socket, we'll display the real data that we get back. This UI is written in React and Hooks, but it doesn't really matter because what we're going to focus on is the connection from the browser to the WebSocket. So you can use a different framework or no framework at all, and the connection to the WebSocket should uh, work regardless. If you learned something from this video, I would really appreciate it if you hit the like button. And also, I have a lot of similar videos about AWS. So if you're interested in these kind of videos, please make sure to subscribe to this channel. So let's see how the code looks like. First, we have this is connected variable that is actually a Boolean. If you weren't using React and Hooks, this would be represented as a plain Boolean variable. Currently, it is set to true, and this is why we see this green indicator here, and we see the relevant buttons for the connected state. We can disconnect and send a public message. If we'll change it to false, then it will switch. When we're in a disconnected state, we see that our indicator has turned to gray, and now we have a button to connect. When we click the connect button, it will call our on connect callback, which is here. Currently, it just logs connect to the console, but we're going to change it to connect to our WebSocket. Also, it works in a similar way with the disconnect button. It just calls the disconnect callback, which we have here. When we send a public message, it will show us a prompt in which we'll be able to enter our public message. Once we'll do, currently, it just calls the on send public message callback. In here, it asks us for the public message, and once we enter it, it logs it to the console like we see here. On the left, we see a list of users. Once we'll get the list of users from our socket, we're going to display them here. Currently, we just have uh, fake information, user one, user two, user three. As you can see, once we update it, it updates in real time in here as well. And for the main content, we have a list of messages. We pass a list of HTML elements as an array. And it's similar to the list of users, it just updates in real time. And once we'll get the information from the socket with the messages, we're going to display them here. We can also click on one of the usernames. Let's say if we click on Bob, once we do, we have this prompt to send Bob a private message, enter a private message for Bob. Once we enter the message, it will call the on send private message callback. As you can see here, now we have the to variable, which is the recipient of our private message and the content of the message. So at the moment, we just log them to the console, but once we'll implement our socket, this is where we'll send the event to our socket in order to deliver the private message to Bob. So what we need to do now is first of all, initiate the socket. In the connect callback, we need to connect to our socket. Once we get the list of users from it back, we need to update it with the list of the members. Each time we get a message from our socket, we need to push it to the chat rows array. When the user sends a private or a public message, we need to send the event to the socket to let it know that we want our, this message to be delivered. And when the user chooses to disconnect, we need to close the socket. So let's start implementing our client side code. First, let's reset the UI and remove the fake data from it. Now we'll also need to create a variable that will hold the URL of the WebSocket which we'll connect to. We'll get it by going to API Gateway and copying the WebSocket URL. We'll also need to add a variable which will hold the socket that we're going to use. When we create the variable, we will set it to null. Because we're using React, we're going to use the useRef hook. But if you were writing this in plain JavaScript, that would be a regular variable that we currently set to null. Now when the user clicks the connect button and the on connect callback is called, let's create the socket. First, let's check that the socket is not already connected. We're going to check if the socket is in a ready state that is different from open, then we're going to initiate and create the socket. You probably noticed that we're using socket.current and again, it's just a reacting. And if you were using plain JavaScript, then you would just say socket.ready state. This is how we are going to connect to the socket. We initiate a new WebSocket instance, and the only argument it requires is the URL of the socket that we are going to connect to, which we took from API Gateway. Now let's add a few event listeners for when the socket connects, closes, or receives a message. So we added the three event listeners. When the socket is opened, we'll call on socket open. When it's closed, on socket close, and then when we receive a message from the socket, we will call on socket message. So let's create the three callbacks for these events. 
When we receive an event that the socket was opened, we should set is connected to true, so the UI will be updated to show the user that the connection is open. And similarly, when the socket is closed, we want to update the UI and show that the connection is closed. And for now, when we receive a message from the socket, let's just log it to the console. And also when we call on this connect, we want to close the socket that we opened. Let's try what we built so far. When we tap the connect button, we expect our socket to connect. And as you can see, it connects and then updates our UI that the socket is connected. And when we disconnect, it should uh, disconnect and then update the UI that it's disconnected. Now let's send events to our socket. For example, when you want to send a private message or a public message or to set the name when you connect. So for example, when the socket is just connected, we want to send the event to set the name of our user. When the socket is just opened, we're going to ask the user for their name and then we're going to send this name to the socket with the action set name. Let's try to see if it works. So the socket connected and now it asks us for our name. And then after we enter the name, we get two events back. First one is a list of members. Currently, we have only one member connected to the chat with the name Bob, which is us. And then we get a system message. Bob has joined the chat. So what we want to do is take the list of users and place them in our user list and then take the system message and push it to our array of messages to display to the user. When we receive a message from our socket, let's parse the data from this event and then update our UI accordingly. First, we want to call json.parse and then get the JSON object from the data string that we received from our event. Then we'll check which attribute our data contains. If we have the members attribute, it means that the socket wants us to update our members list. If it's a public message, it means that we should push a message to our chat array. If it's a private message, then we'll display an alert to the user to let them know that the private message was received. And if it's a system message, it will pretty much be like a public message. So if we received an updated list of chat users, we'll call the set members function to update the list of members. If we receive the public message, we'll then push this public message into our array of public messages. If we receive the private message, we'll simply show an alert to display this message to the user. And finally, if we'll receive the system message, it will work pretty similar to a public message, just the styling will be a little bit different. So now let's try our chat again to see how it works. So now once we connect, we get asked for our name again. And after we enter our name, we get the list of users. And currently we have only one user. And then we get the notification that Bob has joined the chat. So now we'll listen to the public message event, but we can't send public messages yet. So let's add the capability to send a public message. When the user taps the send public message button, the on send public message will be called. And when the user taps on one of the usernames, then the on send private message will be called. At this point, we want to send a message to our socket containing the public or the private message. It will work pretty similar to set name. So let's copy the logic from there. When we send the private message, we want to change the action name to send private. We'll then include the message and we'll include the name of the recipient that this message should be sent to. This will be the recipient that the user tapped on their name in the chat list and the message will come from the prompt in which we'll ask the user to enter the private message. When we send the public message, it will be very similar and we'll change send private to send public and then we'll then remove the recipient because the public message will be sent to everyone. Let's also clean up the UI when we disconnect. So what we want to do is clear the list of messages in the chat and we want to clear the list of the users. So we'll call set members and we'll set it to an empty array and the same with the set chat rows, which we'll set to an empty array as well. And now our chat is ready. So let's try to connect and check all the functionality. But first, let's open this chat application in four different browsers and see how it works with several users connected to the same socket. Now we have our chat application open in four different browsers, Chrome, Firefox, Edge, and Safari. They all connect to the same socket, so let's see how it works with several users. First, we'll open the connection from all the different browsers. We get the list of the usernames in real time, and it updates in all of the clients. We also get a system notification about the users that joined the chat. Since Safari joined last, it will not get a notification about the previous users, but since Chrome joined first, it will get the notifications for all the users. Now let's try to send a public message. Our public message was delivered in real time to all the other clients. 
And this is an example of a message that is delivered to all the clients in real time from the socket. In addition to that, we can also send a private message, which will be only visible to a single user. So let's try to send a message from Chrome to Edge. Now, this is a message that is being received only by one client. The other clients don't have access to this message. We can see that it specifies that Chrome send this message to Edge. Once we disconnect from the clients, we get a system notification that a user has disconnected from the chat. Please don't forget to leave this video a like, it really helps me out. And also don't forget to check out the other videos on my channel and to subscribe.